Hey up guys! So today's movie I'm going to be discussing is the latest film from Eliza Matten, who previously directed the film Beach Rats, which I really liked. Her latest film, Never Rarely, Sometimes, Always, is both written and directed by her, and tells the story of 17-year-old teenager Autumn, played in this film by Sydney Flanagan, who goes on a journey with her cousin Skylar from their hometown of Northumberland County, Pennsylvania, to New York in order for Autumn to terminate an unwanted pregnancy, which Autumn doesn't want her parents to find out about either. Never Rarely, Sometimes, Always is a quiet but powerfully effective film. After I was done watching it the other night, I just sat on my sofa for a few moments to try and gather my thoughts and feelings and process what I watched. I mean, as a man, I can't really say that I know what it's like to be autumn. Like, there's just no way for me to really know, but that didn't stop me from having an empathetic experience watching this film. And that comes down to the devastatingly real performance from Sidney Flanagan, as well as Eliza Hitman's grasp of her subject matter. Before we continue, please help support my channel by hitting that thumbs up button. If you guys have seen Never Rarely, sometimes always let me know what you thought of the film in the comments section down below. And if you want more movie TV and Oscars content, don't forget to click subscribe. It dawned on me whilst I was watching Never Rarely, sometimes always that this is the first ever feature film that I've watched, which tackles the subject of abortion. I have seen the movie Waves, which does have a minor plot thread about abortion, but even then, it's not really the main story of that film. Whereas Never Really, Sometimes, Always, it, the whole story is about uh, Autumn trying to get herself an abortion. But films like this are so important because not only is it a conversation we need to be having, but we just don't have enough films dealing with female struggles as we should. This film is going to resonate with so many women. Those who've had to deal with teen pregnancy, those who've had an abortion themselves, even those that have suffered abuse. And the issue of teen pregnancy is something ever present. It's always going to be around. And having a film like this available to be watched by any teenage girl that should happen to be pregnant, it's comforting and reassuring to see a fictional teenage character going through the same problem that you are. Having a film which sees a character make that choice to have an abortion is so important because it is representation, it's a choice. And so many women out there have made that choice. And it's important that it's represented in the media that we consume. I can see so many women out there being grateful that a film like this exists. At the end of the day, I know this is a film that some people are just not going to like because they fundamentally believe that abortion is wrong and the film does have a my body, my choice sort of narrative. And that's fine, you're allowed to have your beliefs, but I strongly encourage everyone, no matter what your stance is on the issue, to give it a watch. Not as a means of changing your stance on abortion, but as a means of opening up the conversation and empathizing with Autumn and all the women that she is a stand-in for. Because it's such a personal topic, abortion tends to be sensationalized. But what's striking about Never Rarely, Sometimes, Always is how Hitman manages to ground the film in a sense of authentic social realism. Apart from a glimpse of some pro-life protesters outside the abortion clinic, there really isn't anything that's sensationalized in this movie. There's nothing like protesters screaming melodramatically that abortion is murder or anything like that. Instead, Hitman crafts a somber atmosphere which allows you to get into the headspace of Autumn. Hitman's shots tend to fixate on staring into space. There's also a lack of dialogue in this film, and it's in the quieter moments of reflection that you feel the weight of Autumn's predicament. This film is an uncomfortable experience. There are some scenes in this which are incredibly difficult to watch, like a scene where Autumn tries to self-induce an abortion at home. It's made even more uneasing by the fact that we never actually learn who the father is either. And when you're never given a definitive answer, 
It makes your brain fester all the possibilities of how she became pregnant. And in a scene at the clinic where Autumn is chatting to a counselor, she has to answer a bunch of clinical, albeit intrusive questions about her sexual history with the responses, never, rarely, sometimes, always. And Autumn's answers, or sometimes lack of an answer, speaks volumes. It's a devastatingly raw scene, never once cutting away from Sidney Flanagan's fragile face. This scene broke me. Incredible performance by Flanagan. I am certain this film is going to springboard her into bigger projects. Same as Talia Ryder, who plays Skylar. She is wonderful in this as the supportive cousin and friend of Autumn. They really were such a lovely to watch on screen pairing. My only criticism of this film is that I took a little bit of an issue with how all the male characters come across in this film. In short, it's bad. There's not a single male character portrayed in a positive light. You've got the emotionally abusive father, Inappropriate customers, inviting teenage girls to parties, the creepy boss, heckling students, some New York suit masturbating on the subway in front of the girls, and even the boy on the bus played by Theodore Pellerin only agrees to help the girls in crisis in exchange for something. Every man in this is gross. I get why Hitman went this way with the male characters. I just wish there was just as much nuance with the male characters as there were with the female characters. For a film that feels so grounded in realism, the portrayal of all men didn't sit with me right because it runs the risk of sending a negative message to the audience that all men are bad, which is simply not true. Maybe I'm biased because of my gender, but on behalf of my gender, we're not all bad. So let's ask those three questions. Firstly, would I watch this again? Absolutely. I think I would definitely need to be in the right mood to watch this film again, but it is a powerfully effective piece of cinema with some top-notch performances, so yes. Question two, do I recommend it for you guys? I know this film is not going to be for everybody. It's gonna come down to you as a person and how you can handle watching a film that tackles a controversial subject. I encourage people to watch this film. It is an uncomfortable watch, but it's also a very moving one as well. And third question, what score do I give it out of 10? My only criticism was that I thought the portrayal of men was just kind of one-sided. However, this still really was a touching piece of cinema and I was very affected by it. So I'm going to give Never Rarely, Sometimes Always a score of 8.5 out of 10. But as always, I'd love to hear from you guys. What do you guys think of this film? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you want to follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, all those links in the video description down below. Help me out by hitting that thumbs up button. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to click subscribe. Thanks so much for watching guys for more things related to movies, TV, and popcorn culture. I'm Luke Airfield, and I'll see you next time.